Welcome back to Wardcast, guys. Hope y'all doing well out there. I'm your host, Ward. And in this video, I'm going to be doing an update or several updates to the video that I made yesterday regarding Donald Trump's indictment in the District of Columbia for his crimes on and before January 6th. Uh, regarding his attempts to overturn the election through the fake elector scam and also by sending his supporters to attack the Capitol on January 6th. Okay, so we talked about in that video how Donald Trump is going to prison. Uh, now, some people disagreed with that. I'll be addressing some of those stupid comments here in a second. Uh, disbelievers in our justice system who don't know anything about the law uh, try to disagree with me and they have the right to do that. They're wrong. But nevertheless, we'll talk about that. But first, we're going to go over how things have actually gotten even worse for Trump and his prospect of going to prison has increased exponentially and that is because we found out who the sentencing judge will be and it's a judge who has taken the January 6th attack very seriously uh, in the sentencing of other Capitol rioters and she will not let Donald Trump escape without any prison time if he's convicted. And I already told you that it's a done deal as far as the conviction goes. If this goes in front of a jury, which it will, he's going to lose. The judge who will oversee Trump's case has already given out some of the toughest sentences against the January 6 rioters. Judge Tanya Chutkin was nominated by President Obama. She has sentenced at least 38 people connected to the January 6 attack, matching or exceeding prosecutors' recommendations in many of the cases. And Judge Chutkin previously ruled against Trump in a separate January 6 case. In a memorable line in that ruling, she wrote, presidents are not kings and plaintiff is not president. Not a single judge in D.C. or any other federal jurisdiction has been soft on January 6. To be fair, even Trump judges have criticized the attack on the Capitol. They have not behaved like Fox News or Donald Trump trying to pretend that it was no big deal. So, I don't really care who the judge was in this case. Uh, technically, we could have predicted that this was the judge because if you look at the indictment, the uh, the first page of the indictment has the initials of the judge. I wasn't really paying attention to who, what the initials were, and I don't know all the names of the judges by heart in the D.C. district, uh, all the district court judges, so there's no way I was going to know that Judge Chutkin was the one who was assigned. But now we know from the docket for sure that Judge Tanya Chutkin was the one who was assigned to this case, and given how how seriously Judge Chutkin has taken the January 6 attack in previous cases. She is not going to go easy at all on Donald Trump being the head of the criminal enterprise when he is convicted by the jury and it's her turn to sentence because the trial judge is the one who gets to do the sentencing. She has discretion. She can sentence him from zero to uh, 55 years or whatever the max of the, all the charges are. It's 50 plus, right? So that's what he's facing in prison, which Donald Trump being in his 70s is a life sentence. Okay, He's basically going to die in prison even if he gets a medium level sentence from the judge. Okay, And like I said, we have to figure out how we're going to imprison him because he does know national security secrets that no other criminal does. So he is different from everybody else because your random criminals on the streets don't have access, didn't have access to nuclear codes and have, classified, have access to classified documents. So we have to have a smart way of imprisoning him. Okay, So this judge is not going to go easy on him in any way. During motions. He's going to lose every single one and he's going to have to go to trial. They're going to file a motion to dismiss on First Amendment grounds. That's the first thing they're going to do. They're going to lose that and they're going to have to be forced to go to trial. Now, the second thing we're going to be talking about is my own prediction regarding Donald Trump's lawyer's defenses to this, given that uh, the argument that Donald Trump's side is going to make here, which they only have really one argument to make, it's not really obstruction because he was just saying normal things protected by the First Amendment. Of course, that's all, all they have now. Everything is protected by the First Amendment. I'm just telling you guys uh, beforehand, before they do it, what they're going to argue, because they already did it in state court, that everything he said about the election was protected by the First Amendment and he didn't commit any crimes. I'm telling you right now what he's going to say. Quote me now and see it proven correct later. I told you guys when I was making my video, which was about 20 minutes after the indictment dropped, Okay. Before anyone commented on it, I was filming my video because I don't really care what anybody has to say regarding the law. I'm going to tell you guys what the indictment says. And that's what I did. I broke down the indictment, the most important parts of it. Uh, I couldn't cover everything, but nevertheless, I think I covered enough. Uh, anyways, hours after I made my video, Donald Trump's side responded and his lawyer, John Lauro or whatever the hell uh, that guy's name is, he came out and guess what he said? But our focus is on the fact that this is an attack on free speech and political advocacy. 
And there's nothing that's more protected under the First Amendment than political speech. So at the, at the end, our defense is going to be focusing on the fact that what we have now is an administration that has criminalized the free speech and advocacy of a prior administration during the time that there is a political election going on. That's unprecedented. And as I predicted, John Lauro came on multiple TV appearances and said that the First Amendment covers everything Donald Trump did, and that he did not mean to obstruct anything, that he was simply using his First Amendment rights to talk about the fact that he thought the election was stolen and everything he did, he did was legal. This is the, the only real argument they're going to present, and they're going to get their ass kicked in front of a judge and a jury uh, when they present this argument. All right, the last thing I want to address here are a couple of comments that were left by people. Actually, there are many comments left on my last video, but I want to address a couple here. Some serious ones and some stupid ones. First, let's tackle the stupid, uh, spe specifically coming from the stupid progressive side. Uh, a November star says, he won't go to prison, meaning Donald Trump, he deserves to, but America is just too corrupt. And he goes on to say, and or blind, why else would enough of the population vote that clown in to begin with? Well, the Democrats are horrible. Hillary Clinton was horrible. And Joe Biden was no spring chicken. And he had many problems as well. There are many reasons why people voted for Trump, uh, because they don't know all the ins and outs of what he's responsible for. So don't think that people know everything you know. That's a big problem with the left and the right. Everybody thinks that everyone else in the country knows all the information they know. You might know all the horrible things about Donald Trump. That does not mean some soccer mom in middle America knows exactly what Trump has done. Maybe she heard a couple of news stories about how horrible Hillary was. And because of that, she voted for uh, Donald Trump. I don't blame, I don't bl think that that, that person is a horrible person forever because they happen to vote for Donald Trump. And as for America being corrupt, America is not corrupt. I bet you anything that you uh, specifically a November star, never thought that Donald Trump would be indicted. I've been saying for a year, more than a year, that he will be indicted because the American justice system is not corrupt, despite what all your favorite progressive jackasses on YouTube are saying. Trump is not gonna go to prison because he's among the elites. But they never charge the powerful, they never charge the rich, right? If, if the 2024 election comes and goes and Trump is out of politics for good, my guess is that, that they're gonna find a way. They're gonna find a way to make sure he doesn't go to prison. None of you ever thought that Donald Trump would be indicted. I told you that he would be. I was right, you were wrong, because unlike you, I'm not some cynical America-hating left-winger, which is exactly what you and TYT and all the rest of you clowns are. You don't know anything about our legal system, and you run your mouth like you do. You denigrate the hard work of the prosecutors who are actually keeping this country safe, making stupid comments like, the American justice system is corrupt which is something so easy to say. Not a good drug to be on. Yeah. You will be disappointed <laughs> if you have full faith in our, our justice system when it comes to prosecuting well, that potential criminals like Donald Trump. I wouldn't hold my breath in regard to Trump ever going to prison. I'm just, I, I think it's important to keep our expectations um, tethered to reality. I actually think that the two tier justice system we're dealing with here is, pretty gross. Completely discrediting all the hard work of the prosecutors trying to put violent criminal thugs in prison every day, keeping your fat asses safe every day while you sit down on your fat asses in your stupid studios and you spread your lies like Cenk Uger does every day about the government. You're just like Alex Jones. You're the left wing lunatic versions of Alex Jones. You make me sick. Okay, And you're wrong about everything. If you want to look at the facts, rich people get prosecuted all the time by the Justice Department. But they never charge the powerful. They never charge the rich, right? Tonight, the epic rise and downfall of disgraced Theranos founder Elizabeth Holmes has come to an end. The former CEO reported to a federal prison today for defrauding investors out of hundreds of millions of dollars. CS Janet Shamlin reports the 39-year-old was once called the nation's youngest self-made female billionaire. But they never charge the powerful. They never charge the rich, right? A judge has sentenced former British socialite Ghislaine Maxwell to 20 years in prison. A federal jury convicted Maxwell in December for helping her longtime associate Jeffrey Epstein recruit, groom, and sexually abuse teenage girls. But they never charge the powerful. They never charge the rich, right? Former White House advisor, longtime ally of former President Trump, Steve Bannon, has been sentenced to four months in prison for contempt of Congress. Bannon was convicted of two counts of contempt of Congress for defying a subpoena, 
from the House Select Committee investigating the January 6th attack on the Capitol. The Justice Department prosecutes rich people all the time, and I've shown this many times in my videos. It's a fact that progressives like to ignore when they want to attack the justice system because they don't care about facts. They're just like the right wing. They, ha they are allergic to facts as long as it gets in the way of them calling America racist and corrupt, and they want to ignore the facts to attack America. You make me sick just like the right wing does, okay? And you're wrong about everything. You're delusional. That's what the progressive left is at this point. Next, I want to move on to a reasonable comment made by one of my patrons, who I appreciate very much. Uh, Paul DeVoe says, Traitors should be charged with treason. Even if there is no death penalty, they can go to jail forever, not a life sentence. So I think he was trying to say that he should be in jail for life. Well, uh, Paul, unfortunately, the precedent for finding somebody guilty of treason was set back in the 1800s. Basically, here it is, okay? You have to be found guilty with a gun in your hand, charging into a government building with the intent to overthrow the government, or secondly, to fund that enterprise to do an armed revolution against a government building or the government itself. Uh, usually has to be a federal building. Uh, that's the best and easiest way to prove treason. If, so, if an armed group of people with guns or other deadly weaponry invaded a Capitol building with the intent to overthrow the government and Donald Trump helped that effort directly, directly, then he would be guilty of treason, okay? And of course, if you're part of that armed militia who invades a building, you would also be guilty of treason. Short of that, it's very hard to prove treason, okay? And the Justice Department has failed in many cases to reach the legal burden for treason. So what needs to happen, if you want to correct that, is the DOJ has to set a new precedent now by taking a very likely person who has committed something close to treason, taking him all the way up to the Supreme Court and resetting the precedent in a much easier way so and, and lowering the, the burden at trial to prove treason. Because the burden now was set back in the 1800s, I believe it was uh, when John Marshall uh, was around. It was a long time ago, like the 1840s or something. By the way, one of the punishments for treason is death, okay? So death penalty is part of it, and I would have no problem with that. I support that. But as the law is right now, there's no way the Justice Department was going to find Trump guilty of treason. He didn't invade the Capitol armed with guns. He, even the Oath Keepers didn't invade the Capitol with guns. That's why they only got him for seditious conspiracy because there were no weapons. That is a very important element because that's to kill the police and to take over the building. That's why the guns are necessary. Okay. In the 1800s, they charged people with treason because they literally invaded the Capitol and Capitol buildings, federal buildings, and they were convicted of treason. So it's not possible right now to try Trump for treason, even though in spirit he attacked the U.S. government and therefore in spirit he committed treason. That's why I call him a traitor. But legally speaking, it's very difficult to prove that Trump actually committed treason. OK, so that's that's the problem here that why he has not been charged with treason. So I understand your frustration, but legally speaking, the law has to be rewritten for our century and the jurisprudence has to be updated to a to a much easier standard for treason, which treason is a very serious thing. And I think the burden should be high, but I do want it to be lowered as well. So I, under, I understand everybody's concerned with that because you don't want to lower it too much because then the Republicans will try to get the Democrats for treason just because they are political enemies. You know what the what kind of crap the uh, the right wing will do. So we have to be careful about how easy we make it to try people people for treason. Okay, so we have to keep all of that in mind and think about things very carefully before we reset the legal standards. But anyways, moving on. Last thing, Luigi says our citizens need to see the Trump trial live. Well, I understand where you're coming from, but federal trials are not televised and this one's not going to be televised either. Okay, unless the judge makes a special dispensation, the federal judge does get to decide whether she wants to allow uh, cameras into the courtroom, but no federal judge almost ever does. All federal cases are uh, done just live with Without being televised okay uh that is just the law and the legal tradition as of right now and i don't really need that to be, uh, be changed like i said during the gill and maxwell trial i don't need to see what's happening inside the courtroom uh the drama of it is really what this is all about you want drama watch a television show if you want drama watch law and order okay it's a great show any of them special victims units is, is the best in my opinion but nevertheless this is blackmail no mrs andrews it's the law uh, this is serious stuff, and I trust Jack Smith's team to do what's necessary inside the courtroom. I don't need to see it televised like a TV show. I understand where people are coming from when they make comments like this because they want to make, make it seem like there's more accountability when you see it live. There's not. It's just a TV drama, and the media is going to have a field day with it. I don't care for it. Okay, I don't need to be televised. I trust the prosecutors to do, do, do their job, and like I said, Donald Trump will be convicted, guaranteed, 100%. 
It's a, it's a done deal. And he will be sentenced to prison by the judge. And that's all I got to say for this video. As more updates come forward, I'll be making more videos going forward. But for now, that's all I got to say. Thank you so much for watching as always. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching this video all the way to the end. If you want to see more of my videos, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to keep current with the videos that I'm making. And if you have been watching for a long time and appreciate my content and the time that I put into these videos, please consider supporting me on Patreon. I post all the legal documents I use in my videos on Patreon for my patrons. I also post extra legal content when I don't have time to make videos on Patreon for my patrons. As a patron, you can also contact me directly on on Patreon to request a video or ask a question about a relevant topic. These are all privileges that I provide for my patron supporters. With all that being said, I'll see you guys in my next video. Have a very nice day.